welcome <coughs> everyone in this uh, video series i will be explaining about microwave uh, network analysis so specifically we are going to discuss about scattering matrix what is reciprocal network what is lossless network generalized s parameters which is the most important factor in uh, microwave engineering then uh, signal flow graph and decomposition how to use signal flow graph for microwave engineering then s matrix analysis of some waveguides specific waveguides as e plane t h plane t magic t and multi hole directional couplers so once we uh, further proceed so first thing we want to know is why to use the microwave network and what is the microwave network okay first thing is what circuits operating at low frequency so low frequency means at uh, normal ac signals uh, it is operating at 50 hertz or up to some kilohertz so with less dimension level with respect to wavelength can be treated as interconnection of lumped elements okay so these components have a unique voltage and current <coughs> so if i say a resistor like this and some voltage is applied here so in this case uh, in this case we can consider that r1 uh, the voltage drop is specific or a single voltage but in this situation the circuit dimensions are very small small enough so that there is negligible change of phase and field in consider as tmf that means if there is a wave then that is the wavelength so uh, from here to here it is the wavelength so it is saying that according uh, means compared to the wavelength the size of the circuit wavelength is very small okay so if a 50 hertz signal is there then the wavelength will come in kilometers so if i compare a wavelength in kilometers and this resistance then the resistance size is very small so in that case what we can do so they, we can say that okay the resistance have a unique voltage there so these circuits can be analyzed using kcl or kvl that are the standard circuit uh, laws available kirchhoff's voltage law and kirchhoff's current law along with imp <laughs> impedance concept or circuit theory but there is a problem when we go for the microwave circuits or high frequency circuits so what will happen there in high frequency circuits the wavelength is very small so if i just take a resistor here then the complete wave will pass through the resistor so we cannot say inside the resistor at this point the voltage is something else and this point voltage is something else so we cannot con uh, use the kcl and kvl rule here because it doesn't apply the simple circuit or it doesn't follow also the ohms law okay but what is the thing but it can be solved with the microwave circuit uh, circuit based on circuit theory rather than maxwell's equation okay we can use maxwell's equation here rather than using the circuit theory <coughs> sorry then solution of maxwell's equation will give us the exact electric and magnetic field at all points in the space that is what we we need in microwave engineering and however as a user we are interested in the voltage and current so that means what so when we are uh, going to operate on a circuit so actually we are providing the voltage and current so we are not going the uh, going we are not providing the electric field and magnetic field so it is convenient that if we can uh, access or if we can analyze the network using the voltage and current in the terminal and which can be easily done using the circuit or network analysis concept so this is the part where we are going to discuss the microwave network and we are going to use the microwave network so that we can analyze the microwave circuit using circuit network analysis concept so basically it will be a combination of microwave theory and the circuit theory okay so now to consider that uh, um, how to define the voltage and how to define the current in microwave engineering because generally microwave engineering what we do we define everything with e field or h field that is the electric field or the magnetic field so measurement of voltage and current in microwave frequencies is very difficult so basically equipments are not that much uh, accurate in that case sometimes impossible also and unless a clearly defined uh, terminal pair is available so in microwave engineering everything is defined in a space wave or a wave is propagating so when a wave is propagating we cannot say that at which point we are going to measure the voltage or current that is a problem there such terminal is available in tem structure such as coaxial cable microstrip line but non tem structures like waveguide it is not possible so if i say example that uh, your dc tv connection there is a coaxial cable is there so in that case it is possible but it is difficult also but there are some cases where it is not even possible <coughs> so now how to define the voltage or the current in a conductor so the voltage 
for conductor is given as V equals to integration of plus to minus that means positive to negative uh, positive area to negative area from where the current uh, voltage is originating from where it is ending the E field E dot DL. So, you can see in this picture that here the positive charge is there, here the negative charge is there and the total voltage is in integration of the electric field from the positive to negative, how much path or how much distance is there. Similarly, the current is given as closed path integration of H dot DL. So, in this, con uh, if this is a specific conductor, this is a specific conductor, then we can see, we can say that the current here in for this conductor, you can see the dotted line is the H field. So, current is equals to closed path integration of the electric field over the total length. Okay? And now, if we know what is the voltage, what is the current, then you can easily say the impedance is given as Z naught equals to V divided by I. So, that is simply you can relate with imp, uh, R equals to V by I as well. So, further if we know the propagation constant, we can apply the methodology developed for transmission line to characterize the line as a circuit element. Okay? So, if we know the propagation constant that is gamma, then we can easily analyze the things. So, next is how do we apply that and uh, uh, what to do? So, first of all, <coughs> so obtaining the parameters for a waveguide is more difficult. So, if you want to measure the voltage and current, it is difficult. Why? Because you can see here it is a function of the three dimension. So, depending upon what is the length in x, y, z, then the values are going to change. So, if at this position, you can see this here also, if this position voltage is this much, then this position voltage is maximum, again here the voltage is minimum or 0. So, in this case, it is difficult to measure. So, what we need to do? So, the total voltage will be the integration, integration of E dot DL over the length. So, it is said that consider a rectangular waveguide for the dominant mode TE10 mode we are considering. Then E and H field for the waveguide can be expressed as shown in the equation. This is the E field equation, this is the H field equation and then using the following expression that means V equals to integration of E dot DL and then if you just put the value of E here, this E value here, then we can easily get it J W mu A divided by pi. So, A is the <coughs> length from length in the x axis and A sin pi x divided by A e to power minus J beta Z dy by uh, integration of dy into y because we are more interested in calculating how what is the maximum voltage here okay in this range it is for te10 mode okay so for te10 mode this is the case for te11 mode then we have to take integration of dx as well so in this case only dy is taken so now we can say the voltage v equals to minus j omega mu into a that is distance in the x into a sin pi x divided by a e power minus j beta. So, this comes from the integration. Now, the voltage depends on the position along with the length of the integration contour along the y direction. So, it says that if a is at 0 centimeter, the value is different. If a is at 1 centimeter, then value is different. If a value we put at 2 centimeter, then the value comes as different. And also the integration to how, what is the total length in y. So, it depends on both. So, for integration with y equals to 0 for to b, integration of y equals to 0 to b, that means y equals to 0 to b. So, integration over this path and for x equals to a by 2, if you put the a x value, this x value as how much a by 2, that is the middle of the waveguide, it is very different from if you put the value as x equal to 0 or x equal to a, that means if you calculate the voltage here, it is different from calculating voltage here and voltage here. Okay. So, in order to use the voltage and current similar manner as in circuit theory, the equivalent values of this quantity needs to be calculated because it is different. So, we cannot use the circuit theory here. So, that the power can also be calculated with multiplication of voltage and current. So, thing is that if we can go for the power calculation, which is power, what you say it is v into i in case of uh, electric field and h field it is e cross h so power in magnetic field it is e cross h now e is related to v and h is connected uh, connected to i so in that case if we can characterize these circuits as power then it will be easy for us okay so for that what do we need to do so we need to develop one matrix called as uh, impedance matrix and then we'll see how to relate the power here okay 
So with the voltage and current defined at various points in a microwave network. So first we have to define the voltage and current. Then impedance and admittance matrix can be used as a similar circuit theory. So if we can define the voltage and current, then we can use the Z matrix, impedance matrix or the Y matrix. So it is Y matrix, it will be your Z matrix. So this can relate different port quantities to each other with matrix definition of the network. So as in circuit theory it was there, here also it will be there. So it is saying that it can relate to different port quantities. That means in this figure, so here it is port 1, here it is port 2, here it is port 3, here it is port 4. So like this we can go up to port n. Okay, in a micro circuit multiple components will be connected there. So uh, wherever the components are connected to a circuit then these points of connection are called as the ports. Okay, it is basically defined as that. <coughs> So these ports mentioned in the circuit may be a transmission line or transmission line equivalent of a webgate. So we can consider that in both way. If more than one mode is propagating in any webgate, then these two modes can be represented as two different ports. So different mode are going to work differently. That's why they can be represented in different modes. So at each specific point of any port, that means you take first port, second port, or third port, or anything. In nth port, the terminal is defined as a plane. The, the plane means so we define a point. So after this, we are considering this as a port. So this much part we are taking into the circuit, and this much part we are taking for the load or transmission line, whatever it is connected. So along with the equivalent voltage and current for incident and reflected voltage. So what we have done here? So in this port, so as this is a two-way communication, so there will be voltage that is going inside the network and there will be voltage and current which is coming outside the network. So whichever voltage is going inside the network, they, they are characterized as V1 plus and I1 plus and whichever voltage are going outside the network, they are called as V1 minus and minus I1, okay? negative I1 because the current direction is changed here, but the voltage, voltage amplitude direction remains same. Similarly, for port 2, it is V2 plus is the inward voltage, I2 plus is the inward current, V2 minus is the outward current and minus I21 is the outward current. So like this in Vn plus In plus and Vn minus minus In minus is there. So the terminal plane is very important for the providing the reference of the voltage and current phasor. Phasor means what? Phasor means this direction. Now Vn means at any node, what is the total voltage? total voltage is equals to combination of the inward voltage and the outward voltage. Now the point is that why the outward voltage is there? Be basically whenever microwave network is there, so if some signal is coming, all the signal are no not transferred to the circuit, some of the signal is reflected back. So the, it is saying that the total voltage at this node, if you uh, try to find what is the total voltage here. So it is nothing but combination of the forward voltage and the reflected voltage that is Vn plus plus Vn minus. Similarly, the total current is equals to forward current In plus minus In minus. So this is the total voltage and current in a network. So next after this, what we are going to do? So we are going to define that as a matrix circuit. So how to define matrix circuits? We know that V is equals to Z into I. So the if one voltage is there, one uh, Z is there, then this is V equals to ZI. Now if we represent that as a matrix, so what will happen? So all the V1, V2, V3, Vn is equals to I1, I2, I3, In. So why this matrix is required? Because there are multiple ports are connected here. Okay. So if I write only one, V1 is equals to what? Z11 into I1 plus Z12 into I2. So like this it will go on, so this multiplication. So this is V1 like this, V2, Vn can be calculated and this represents as V matrix that is equals to Z matrix into I matrix. Now the same thing can be represented as admittance matrix as well. So here it is the admittance matrix. So from where the relation is coming, I equals to Y into V. So Y is nothing but that is equals to 1 by Z, effectively this becomes your V by Z. Okay. So I equals to V by Z or the admittance matrix Y. So I matrix is equals to admittance matrix into the V matrix. So that is how the network can be characterized in form of voltage, impedance, current or admittance. So next is 
as I said y equals to z power minus 1 or we say y equals to 1 by z. Now impedance of any port will be how much? So impedance is equals to voltage by current. Okay. So impedance at any port that means impedance of z i j. z i j means what? So z i j means so i represents the voltage and j represents the current. So that means if I say what is the value of z 1 2. Okay, what does that mean? That means if y, I want to send a signal from port 1 to port 2. So if I want to send a signal like this, so that is called as Z12 and the impedance will be V1 divided by I2. Okay? So this Z value will be V1 divided by I2. That is what written here. So it said that Zij can be found by driving port J with the current I. And, op and open circuiting all other ports that means nothing is connected in all other ports it is open circuited <coughs> except i k is equals to 0 for k not equals to j okay so that means all currents i3 i4 up to i n all are 0 except where k is not equals to j that means for which we are calculating so if we take uh, I2 then for K not equals to 2 all other ports are 0 and measuring the open circuit voltage at port I. So here we will be giving the current as I1 or oh, sorry here we will be giving the current as I2 all other ports are open nothing is connected and then here we will measure the voltage as V1 voltage how much voltage is there and the ratio V1 by V2 will give the Z12 value or the Zij value. So, thus Zii is the input impedance seen looking into the port 1 when the all other ports are open circuited. So, if I say Z11, so Zii means if I take example of Z11, so that is equals to how much current you are giving at port 1 and accordingly how much voltage you are giving at you are getting at port 2. So, that is your Z11 here. Similarly, Yij, Yij is also uh, means, uh, measured as I by V where J is the voltage and the I is the, the sequence is important. Okay? So, if I write Z31 then that is equals to V, so that is equals to V3 divided by I1. That means how much current you are giving at port 1 and how much voltage you are going to measure at port 3. So, this is what your Z31 and this nomenclature is. Okay. <coughs> so, next is which one we can call as a reciprocal network? How, what is called as a reciprocal network? So, that uh, we will be discussing in the next video. So, please keep watching.